Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we took care of, oh an environmental effect. We took care of an environmental effect where we did uh, some kind of like, you know, electrified puddle or something like that. Um, uh, there's a, a lot of things you can do with particles, guys, and I really recommend that you go through and you explore them, make yourself some awesome environmental effects, and you will have yourself a decent looking game. In today's episode, we're going to go uh, back to a little bit of procedural animation. We're going to take a look at the physics engine in Unity, uh, particularly the 3D physics engine. The 2D and the 3D physics engine are completely separate. Uh, meaning that if you create a 3D objects, it will not work with the 2D physics engine, and a 2D object will not work with the 3D physics engine. So, in today's episode, guys, we're going to take a look, I think, at at least one of the joints. We're going to make ourselves a trap door here. We're going to discuss the other joints as well, but uh, I think we're going to make ourselves a trap door, and then you can go on from there and build yourself some awesome stuff. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, so as I mentioned today, we are going to be taking a look at the 3D physics engine. Uh, the 2D and 3D physics engines are completely separate uh, items, meaning that if you have 2D and 3D assets mixed within the same game, uh, you're going to require the use of both engines. You don't have to do anything special. The appropriate assets will automatically work with the appropriate engine, uh, but you'll have to keep that in mind. If you, if you build yourself a collider, if you build yourself a 3D game uh, and you build yourself a 2D collider, not that it's going to work, for example. All right, so, so keep that in mind. Anyway, in today's episode, what we're going to do, I'm going to scroll across here, Whee! what we're going to do is we're going to build ourselves a trap door that is going to go directly across uh, across here. It's going to allow our player to to jump on it. It's going to it's going to fall down. The player is going to have to run up it, or they're going to have to, you know, if, they, if it zooms up fast enough, they're going to have to uh, get on the elevator, ride it back up, and then jump on and so on. Uh, that's our plan. It works exactly like the sample game. If you take a look at the sample game that I made, uh, we've got one of these in place in this location. Uh, we also have over our electrical trap right about here, we had a, a swinging uh, a swinging platform. And that swinging platform is going, it uses exactly the same concept as, as our trap door. It uses a hinge joint, which you're going to understand in a little bit. I'm not going to show you how to make that swinging trap, or sorry, the swinging platform. I'm going to leave that up to you guys. All right. Uh, once you've you've completed this work on the trap door, you should be able to go through and apply the same concept to the to the actual swinging platform. Uh, so let's take a look. First of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say game object. I'm going to create a 3D object. I'll just create a cube. And guys, really don't do this. <laughs> I'm creating this cube for demonstration purposes. If you have plans to actually make a game uh, and, you're, and you have yourself an aesthetic already designed and you've got yourself some nice textures, make sure you go through. Don't be lazy like me. Go through and model this guy up nice. All right, let's, let's just scale this so it fits the area. Uh, let me see. That's, that's, is that too long? Uh, let's, make it, let's make it 11. Let's make it 11. Check that out. All right, and let's skinny this guy up, all right, like that, and let's make it wide in the Z so it fills our area nicely. Uh, we only need a skinny area, right? Like that, our 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 that our player can run across. But let's make it fill the area so we don't get any weird shadows or anything below. That's obviously too wide. Let's make it. Let's try six. I'm taking my time, even though I'm making a little crappy object, <laughs> still taking my time. All right, mixed signals, I guess. Um, okay, so I'm just going to move this into place. That's good enough. Whatever. Uh, I just want to kind of avoid when you got a light source in place. Uh, if you if you don't have this thing aligned appropriately, uh, then of course you're going to get shadows that are being cast on the wall, weird and that kind of thing. And I don't want that. All right, let's just align it. That's that's probably good enough. All right, so a quick review. Hopefully, uh, hopefully our our thing can make it up there. We'll check it later. If not, I'll skinny it. Anyway. A quick review, uh, when I created this cube, uh, which I won't call cube, obviously, let's call it uh, trap door. Uh, when I created this cube, uh, first of all, I want the player to be able to run on it. So right away, I'm going to go ahead and change my layer to the ground layer so our character can actually jump on top of it. Great, he can now jump. Uh, it's only got a handful of things associated with it right now. It's got a transform node, all game objects will. Uh, it's got a cube or mesh filter. Uh, the mesh filter itself is the mesh. Uh, the box collider is obviously a collider, and it's appropriately sized because we built it around a, an existing cube with a mesh filter. Um, we've got ourselves a mesh render which shows everything up and our default material. Now that's all we've got on here. If we go down, we say add component, boom, and we say physics. Uh, we can scroll down and we can see we've got a number of joints available. Three basic joints, hinge joint, fixed joint, and spring joint. 
in all honesty, I've never used the character joint or the configurable joint. I'm sure they're super awesome and they probably solve half the problems I have in the world, but I don't know what they do. <laughs> I really should look it up. Uh, anyway, but the basic joints, the hinge joint, fixed joint, and spring joint, we'll take a look at those uh, in uh, very briefly today. The, the fixed joint is the most basic of the three. So watch what happens. When I hit fixed joint, boom, automatically what happened is I got myself a rigid body now associated with this object. It was automatically added. All three of the joints require that a rigid body is associated with the asset that you've created in order to have this joint in place. If you don't have one, it'll automatically be added for you. Uh, if you have one already, then it won't bother. Like you won't end up with two of them or anything like that. Uh, but if you don't have one, it's automatically going to be added for you. Now the fixed joint um, is the simplest of the joints. Basically what we've got here is we've got a connected body, uh, so another rigid body that this is connected to. And by connecting, uh, connecting these two objects together, it's basically like parenting. So basically I, I've kind of parented them together. Uh, but it's a little bit more, uh, it's got a little bit more options. Uh, obviously, and, and it's a little bit more processor heavy because it's it's being acted upon by by physics and forces. Um, but you can use you can use the fixed joint to parent things together, make them stick together. Uh, and the good thing about it is by adding a break force. Now, right now it's set to infinity, so it won't actually break. But by adding an appropriately uh, appropriately sized break force, you can tear apart these objects. So basically, with whatever the fixed joint is connected to, the connecting the two things together, you can tear off one of them. All right, you can tear off the one that's got the fixed joint associated with it, uh, and it'll cause it to break off and fall under its own free gravity, whatever. Uh, either by either by a brake force or a brake torque. So depending on what you want to use it for, uh, you can go through and, and add an appropriate number in there, apply that force and cause it to snap. So I don't know, you might want to use this if you were creating like, I don't know, like a, let's say you wanted to have a, a wagon wheel. Let's say you had a game and you had a wagon wheel and the wagon wheel is driving along, it hits a bump and you want it to fly off, boom, you could add a brake force to it and it would cause the wagon wheel to fall off the wagon. All right, so just an example. Now I'm going to delete this. We're not going to actually use a fixed joint. I'm going to delete it and remove component. Uh, the rigid body, when I remove the component, the rigid body is a completely separate object, so it stayed in place. All right, it stayed there. It did not delete the rigid body. So if ultimately you say, oh, shoot, I didn't want that there, uh, and you remove the fixed joint or any joint, and you didn't want the rigid body, you have to go back and remove that as well. All right, let's go back and add a component now, and I'm going to add a physics, and I will add the spring joint. Uh, and once again, no initial, no additional uh, rigid body was created. I'm using the one that's already existing. The spring joint works uh, similarly to the, to the fixed joint uh, in that you can attach two things together by having a connected uh, body. Uh, but the, the difference as well is the spring joint uh, does what it can to uh, spring back to its original position or towards the, the connected anchor point anyway, or the anchor point. Uh, and the connected anchor and the anchor. So the anchor is where it's anchored to, and the connected anchor is where it's anchored, like the thing it's anchored to, and the connected anchor is where it's anchored in the actual asset itself. Uh, using this object will allow, basically what happens is, is when we hit play, here, let me just do it, let me hit play. Well, first of all, let me show you this. Um, the the uh, connected anchor and anchor are right there. Let me just turn this off so you can see. It'll look up like a little little orange uh, cube right there. Now basically, watch what happens when I hit play. Maximize on play is off, good. When I hit play, boom. What's gonna happen is the object itself is doing what it can to move back towards its anchored point. And you can see it's being affected by physics right now. So it's bobbing up and down, bobbing up and down. Now obviously, depending on what you change the spring to, you will have more or less bob. Depending on how your damper is, it'll slow down at a faster and faster rate. But by having the character jump onto this, let's see if I can get him over there. Let's see if I can get over there. Grab this. Whee! Sorry, the noises are probably... Oh, I clicked on the wrong spot. Probably quite loud. Whee! All right, I gotta remember my electrical trap. Oh, I hurt. All right, so if I jump on there, bam. All right, well, it's it's <laughs> it's not balanced. Uh, it's not balanced. Like it, it, unless unless you go through and you freeze, <laughs> you freeze your stuff. It's not gonna actually stay balanced. So right now it's just swinging swinging wherever it wants. But anyway, you can see how my character was able to uh, able to interact with it, and it's still doing its best to try and uh, it's trying doing its best to try and move back. Uh, towards this point right here. That's what the spring joint does. Let me let me stop that. 
and let me we'll go get rid of this now well let's take a quick, a quick look at it so basically the yeah the anchor point as i mentioned the anchor point and the and the uh uh connected anchor point um uh can be adjusted to allow you to have this thing swing from a different location or move in a different manner the spring itself um is is how springy how much how much spring this object has how much it'll bounce basically uh how, how hard it'll try and get back up to the original position well it's a, i think it's a force I'm not sure if it's a K coefficient of a spring. It might be. I don't know. The guys at Unity are obviously geniuses and, and code things to be realistic. Damper is how quickly it'll slow down. And once again, this thing here has a brake force and a uh, brake torque. So by applying an appropriate amount of force or appropriate amount of torque, you can snap this joint off. All right. So if you had this thing a platform, you wanted to you know to bounce up and down, uh, and if your character is too heavy or whatever, he can tear the entire thing off. Uh, all right, so yeah, that's that's the spring joint. It's interesting, but it's not exactly what we want to use. You could decide to use that. You could use it over here, uh, over top of your platform. Go ahead and use that if you want to. You don't have to use exactly what I'm doing. You guys can go through and create your own game. Obviously, I'm just demonstrating this stuff. So let's dump this. Let's uh, let's get rid of this. I'm gonna. Oh, and once again, like I said, yeah, it's got a little orange spot there that you can see uh, the connected and the anchor joints. And you saw them when when I hit play. You can see that they they separate. You can see that there's one up there and one down there. All right, let me stop that and let's dump our spring joint, remove component. Now, the last one we're going to take a look at is the hinge joint. And this is the one that we used to make, this one we're actually going to use to create our, our object. I'm going to go to physics and I'm going to add my hinge joint. Now, this one looks different. As you can see, um, it's got a little arrow. All right, and that little arrow is uh, the actual hinge joint itself. And it's, it's basically showing you the access of pivot. So once again, we've got ourselves an anchor. So whatever we're connected to, all right? After that, we've got ourselves an axis. And the axis is the direction that it's going to, sp uh, it's going to spin. In our case, we want it to rotate right around uh, this axis, around this location, around this axis in this direction, all right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my anchor back. Let's move it back in the, well, not too far, somewhere right, it doesn't really matter, somewhere right about there. You want it as close to the edge as you can get it so that it's going to, uh, I'll put it at zero, uh, at one, so it's up top. Um, you want it to be as close to the edge, and, and I'll rotate it and show you. Um, the axis right now is pointing directly along the X direction, so if, if I hit play right now, uh, it's not going to actually do anything because there's no, 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 nothing on it, but watch what happens. So if I run, oops, run back there. Uh, I should just move my guy. I'm being really lazy today. All right, jump. Let's run across. And oh, I can't move off the axes. <laughs> if I, if I, can I move off the axes enough? There. That's basically what it's doing. You can see that the hinge joint now is allowing this thing to to rotate about that particular axis. And obviously, that's not what we want to do. I mean, that that makes an awesome trap, right? Like that's an awesome trap. Let's see if our elevator works now. Can I get past it? Good, I can. Um, it, it makes an awesome trap. We, but right now it's not going to work the way I want it to work. All right, so that's a, a that, that's a pretty cool way to make a trap door. Uh, anyway, we're going to use that similar concept, uh, and instead of instead of having it rotate around the x axis, I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to have it the axis it rotates around as the and you could have some combination of the two. So right now I can use x and y, uh, sorry x and z, but I'm going to have it just rotate around the z axis by itself. And let's move this anchor back a little bit now. Move this anchor back. Interesting. I have never seen it do double like that before. I don't know if that's a graphical error. Let me let me check that. I don't know if that's a, I've never no. Okay, it was just a graphical error. That's cool. Yeah, they had two arrows there for a second, and it was probably because I'm recording. Anyway, so yeah, so right now I've aligned this thing here with the with the edge um, of my object. Uh, and you know what? Maybe I'm gonna make this go. Put it zero in the Y. And I'm assuming it moved. <laughs> uh, I don't like it when a. Uh, let's put it at 0.5. I don't like it when my graphics don't work like this. Anyway, my graphics don't seem to be working. Anyway, we're going to put it uh, at zero in the Y. Uh, and when I play now, let's see if it moves. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it moves. It sprung down. So it's now rotating around the, the bottom edge, and that's cool. All right, so you can see how uh, when I hit play, um, it, right now it just simply rotates down. All right, it simply rotates down. Um, it's falling under the force of gravity. It is connected at this location. But if we scroll down and look at our actual hinge joint, um, we can apply, once again, a brake force or a brake torque uh, to break that actual joint and have this floor, for example, snap off. If you wanted to do something like that, you have to apply the appropriate force. Um, let's stop it. 
Um, so yeah, you can see how it automatically moved uh, moved through the uh, around the axes and fell into place. If we take a look, there are a bunch of different options. This is the most complicated of the three basic joints. The spring joint, uh, sorry, the hinge joint allows you to have a spring. So if you use spring, once again, it can, it'll try and bob back and forth. Let's see if I actually put this at, let's say, I don't know, 10. Let's see what happens. And give it a damper of 0.5. I don't know. Those are just numbers I'm making up. It might not do anything at all. But anyway, you can turn on the use spring. It didn't really do anything. Well, I have to go through and play with the numbers to see. Um, you can use spring and then connect er, and then change these values here in order to have it act like a spring joint where it's trying to spring back to its original position. Uh, let me stop it. I don't actually want to use this for now. Zero and zero. Uh, below that is something called the motor. Uh, and the motor will allow you to have, a, have the object um, attempt to move uh, in a particular direction. Um, if I say use motor right now uh, and I hit play, nothing's going to happen. It's actually applying a velocity of zero with a force of zero. So it's not actually trying to move upwards in any, in any particular manner. Um, if, however, I give this thing a target of velocity of, let's say, I don't know, depending on how fast you want it to return to its position, let's say I give it a target velocity of 20, and these are just numbers I'm making up, and a force of 200. When I hit play now, boom. Um, the object has started to move up. All right, so you can see that it's attempting to. Let me let me let me decrease my target velocity a little bit, or my force. Let's uh, decrease my target velocity to, let's say, let's actually make it higher first of all. So let's say 200. Uh, and I'm gonna hit play, and you can see it's gonna spring up relatively quickly. All right, uh, and it's got a little bit of bounce to it. Um, I'm gonna decrease this to 20. And right now, I don't want I don't want my object to be able to go past the floor. Right? right now, if I hit play, like I was doing before, the object is being forced up until it collides. It's colliding with another collider and saying, I can't go any further. So my collider is what's actually holding it from, from spinning all the way around. If I didn't have a collider on this object over here, uh, it would spin all the way around, all the way around like a motor. Uh, that's basically what it is, a motor. It keeps spinning around this axis. Uh, and I don't want it to do that, right? I want it to stop at the floor level. So directly underneath use motor is the limits. If I say use limits, and I give it a, I don't remember if it's a minimum or maximum. Let's check and see. Uh, let's say I give it a minimum of, uh, let's try, I don't know if it's minimum or maximum, I can't remember now. If I say 100, play. All right, so the minimum it can go to is, it's 10 and 100 right now, max is 100. The minimum it can go to is 10, and I don't want that. Zero this thing out. The minimum I want to be able to go to is zero. Let's see if I do play now. All right, so. Right now, with this in place, I have a, a minimum rotation of zero and a maximum rotation of 100. And you can see that my object is not moving. It's really stuck in place there. Now, watch what happens if I bring my dude over. I don't know why I keep shooting that. I can just ignore it if I wanted. All right, so let's jump over there. Now, watch what happens if I run in there, jump over my electrical, and I jump on top of this. Bam! My thing is automatically Oh, I shouldn't jump back on. It's automatically falling and it's automatically moving back up. Get out of the way! The elevator almost squashed me. Um, it's automatically moving back into position. Now that's what it's designed to do. The target velocity is telling it how fast it should move back into position. So if you wanted to set it up so that your, your character might miss this opportunity to do this, uh, then you can increase your target velocity. Um, the force is how much how much force is being applied. So if, if I make it like a force of like 10,000, when my character jumps on it, it's not going to be enough to actually cause it to fall down. All right? Uh, that's it. And once again, the hinge joint works exactly the same way as our as our other joints. By applying an appropriate amount of, of brake force or brake torque, we can cause the entire thing to tear off. All right, guys. So that is it. That's basically how you create yourself a trap door. Now, you should be able to use the same concept to create yourself the swinging platform. Move your hinge somewhere well up above it and allow it to swing back and forth. All right, guys, that's your assignment. Go ahead, give it a try. If you're going to add a trap door, don't do the cube thing. <laughs> do it nice and do it neat. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, let me know down in the comments. Let me know with a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't. If you give me a thumbs down, let me know why. If you want me to make changes to what I'm doing, then you have to tell me what went wrong and what you didn't like, and I will go through and make the appropriate changes. All right, guys, thumbs up. Thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.